or could it be manipulated purposely by people who have the technology to uh, simulate UFO sightings? And mm -hmm. people say, well, of course not. Who would do a thing like that? During, Watergate, during the Watergate investigation, it was discovered that there was a plan uh, originated in the White House to uh, surface a submarine off the coast of Cuba and paint the second coming of Christ over the island of Cuba using holograms, oh, yeah. which is well within our technology today. The idea was that since there is a large Catholic population in Cuba, they would be so upset by this vision that this would saturate the communication channels, you know, the telephone system in Cuba, long enough for an invasion to take place. How interesting. I never heard of that. Well, I think that's uh, you know, a classic in psychological warfare, but that kind of uh, manipulation is, is well understood. And I have personally investigated several apparently you know, genuine UFO cases where there was, in fact, many, my, my conclusion, the conclusion of scientists working with me, was that there was, in fact, a manipulation taking place and that it was not a hoax on the part of the witnesses, but a hoax on the part of somebody much better organized than them. So there are possibly all of these levels going on simultaneously. Today, the, t today with the current technology, that would be possible. Uh, another one we put on a UFO and was able to report like he had been abducted, mm -hmm. you know, in this case where he had not been, but uh, you know, you know full sightings were you know, popular at the time, particularly the abduction scenario. So that was one where, again, changing history uh, could cause a, a, a new scenario and be able to describe the situation just as if it were real. Len and Duncan, why don't you guys introduce yourselves and talk about, you know, what is it you guys do and what, what's your background? Uh, my name is Len Baer. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm uh, formerly a physician from, um, from the USSR, from the, uh, um, from the former USSR. <laughs> I, uh, um, specialized in, uh, I, uh, was a medical doctor specialized in endocrinology came over here in um, 93 to work for a pharmaceutical company and in the area of my research. And then uh, um, I was prepared to um, get licensed in the, in the States, but you know, things on the uh, business side took over and, and, and I stayed on the business side and uh, um, currently working in the regulatory field. Um, for a company in Chicago area, um, U.S. naturalized citizen, um, married, um, and been target of directed energy weapons since 2019. Since 2019? Yeah, in the summer of 2019. So three it's years ago? Three, just over three years ago. It started um, happening to me. Um, and um, it was diagnosed um, in 2020 uh, with um, vestibular dysfunction due to direct energy exposure by the same um, um, team of experts that diagnosed Cuban diplomats. Um, Duncan? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, I have uh, an Ivy League background, education, and I've been studying uh, and human rights activism for what is now currently termed Vanna Syndrome, but this has been going on for quite some time. I worked for DARPA uh, on projects for the CIA, for uh, the Navy, for example, wrote the Artificial Intelligence Code, tracked the Soviet nuclear submarine fleet. Um, but uh, about 20 years ago, I realized some of my research was being utilized on my own citizens. 
and that is unacceptable to me. And since then, I've done hundreds of interviews, interviewed 2,500 victims or targeted individuals, as they're called. And that was the very last time we had any interaction with, uh, with helicopters, thankfully. Yeah. And, um, you know, you can answer this however you want. It's uh, after, after you got in touch with Tom, were there any kind of, was there any talk about doing any kind of tests or examinations? There was, and I had an examination. I won't use the doctor's name, but I had a, a qualified medical doctor uh, come down and uh, wanted to see my knee and wanted to talk to me about my story. Uh, took a fresh set of x-rays and uh, he stayed at a residence inn and I went over and we had two solid days of discussion, which was mostly me going from my earliest memories at birth through that day. Yeah. And um, of course, with a big focus on what happened in 1977. And um, we got, we got to the end. He did not, by the way, he didn't take a blood sample. So that wasn't done. Yeah. Um, he did ask me if I had any native American blood, um, which I didn't at the moment know how that could have been relevant in any way, but I found out that I guess it is relevant. Yeah. And, um, he, uh, when we, when we finished, um, he was very kind and he, uh, said, you know, you, you might be not might be, you are, uh, what's called by some people, a targeted individual. And I'd never heard the term before. And I said, targeted by who? By ET? By the government? Who, who has me targeted? And that wasn't a real comfortable question. And he said, I, you know, I got a book that I'd like you to read. And um, he bought it from Amazon and it was delivered to me. And the title of the book is The Girl with the Emerald Eyes or the girl with emerald eyes. And uh, I read it and it was about a, um, a guy that has incidents and uh, encounters. And he's suddenly seeing, and this sounds outrageous because it's meant to be sound outrageous. He sees invisible little dancing midgets that only he can see and has other kinds of uh, auditory and visual hallucinations. And these things that he saw, heard, were tied to uh, naval intelligence. Naval intelligence. Naval intelligence in particular, yeah. Uh, there's something called like Project Blue Beam. Yeah, good one. What uh, is that? That is that's lasers, right? Yeah, I can uh, I can actually talk about that one, but that is uh, uh, <laughs> it's really bad. But you know the people that see orbs in the sky. Yeah, uh, go around and fly faster. UFOs, than it. You know, UFOs. Yeah, the, there's there's Navy pilots. There's an uh, yeah, multiple yeah, the, Navy pilots who talk about them. they okay. got there. So they were flying F-18s. These these oh. Navy pilots. And one of them's coming in here in a couple in two weeks. He's uh, oh. Ryan Graves. Okay. He uh he's a Navy pilot flying off the coast of North Carolina, and they they got their uh their radar upgraded on their F-18s, and yeah. all of a sudden they were seeing these things darting around on their radar. Okay. Uh, don't tell him what I'm about to say and see if he knows about um, it. Okay. Um, so what we do is we play with our own forces to make sure our trickery will work on the enemy. Uh, and those are directed energy weapons of where we do intersecting beams or focus beams into the atmosphere and notice they're always in the atmosphere to excite the electron orbitals of the oxygen and, and nitrogen uh, in our atmosphere 
it, it causes a glow and it causes ionization. That ionization shows up on radar and like a, it's like a cat laser pointer and we're making planes chase them. That's exactly how they describe these things moving, like laser pointers. Yeah. And so we can do it in three space and we can make it look like in three dimensional space. Yeah. And we can make it look like, uh, an entire fleet is about to drop bombs on, let's say, Europe, and then just have them disappear. And they ha- they get all their planes up in the air, and we attack them from the other direction, uh, assuming we're attacking Who Europe. is doing this? The Navy, you said? Uh, somebody. <laughs> let's just say a group. A group, you know. And you know this for a fact. I know for a fact, yeah. So anyway, don't tell your guests. A group within the U.S. government. Yeah, okay, we'll leave it at that. Yes. And, and I, is this something Is this something that could be seen with the naked eye? Or yes, is this something because that it glows. Be- it glows. So it would be seeable, you can see it by the naked eye, and it would leave a radar trace. So it's perfect as a deception, and, and it invo- involves the voice of God weapons that I was talking about. Project Bluebeam does. And this got... This got leaked, uh, and so it probably won't have the effect, and they probably won't do it. But if you wanted to bring the world together, as President Reagan said in several UN speeches, you would have a common enemy like evil aliens attacking. We forget right. our differences right. and we fight against it. So we wouldn't prog- look at each other as as Chinese or Russian yeah. or American. We'd look at each other as Earthlings. It's for humans, yeah, as Earthlings, and so that was. Project Blue Bean was to trick the human race into believing either God is coming down, everybody hears the voice of God, the microwave hearing effect, uh, get along, give, you know, whatever the new message is, or it was going to be the evil aliens attacking. And notice how they all of a sudden, all the governments release all their information on UFOs, and there's a whole uh, division dedicated, it. and that's just deception. You think it's all deception? I think it's all deception. Really? Yeah. But, you know, that's my opinion. I've looked at all the videotapes Mm -hmm. uh, that people have given me, and I can explain away each one of them. So apparently, but there's there's apparently lots of footage and videos and photos that have not been released to the public. Yeah, I haven't seen those, so... I can't get And if you think this is all some sort of psyop, what do you think the ultimate purpose of it is? Distraction against a lot of this human experimentation we're doing. 